series of unusual relationships. And we've been learning that like relationships uh, in our culture are normally, they're unusual, they're not normal. Uh, that they don't, they, they don't act the same. And, and I think in our culture, we see that all the time. And I just wanna make sure that as a, as a body and as a, as a church that we, that we not be like the culture where divorce is really high, where relationships is really dysfunctional. I really believe that it's our job and it's our call that we may be the people of God that's different uh, and, and God's called us. So I wanna say thank you, uh, Mr. Smith, for being here today. Um, you know, uh, I think that we have a marriage problem in America really because we have a parenting problem. And, and I just wanna say thank you for uh, preparing Chanel for this day. And although, if you don't know, uh, Chanel and Evan are actually already married. <laughs> Um, but really, you prepared her for this moment, and you prepared her for this calling that she's walking in now. And I want to say thank you. Um, uh, there, there, I have a suitcase right here, and I think about this suitcase, and you can bring it up right now. And I think about uh, uh, every, the Bible says in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, that, uh, that we are to uh, leave our mother and our father uh, to be married, to, to be one with our, our mate, and I, I realize that in our culture that, that we don't understand what that word leave mean, but in the Hebrew word, it really meant to journey, to be on a journey. And I, when I think about the word journey, I think about you helping your daughter or your son and packing their bag, preparing them for this journey that they're about to walk in. And I want to say thank you for packing her bag the right way. And I know that inside this bag is, uh, I'm not sure what's all in there, I know it's not perfection. I know there's days where you make mistakes and you fell short. I know there's days where you wasn't on your best game and your A game, but I do know this, that you packed God in her bag. And I just wanna say to all the parents here today that it's our job and it's our duty to not only uh, uh, pray over our kids and, and love on them, but it's our job and our duty to prepare them for this day like this. And I really believe this, that if we're going to see a change and a shifting in the church of God, it starts with a parenting issue. And I just want to maybe address, because I know sometimes we're living in a culture where uh, it's really anti-normal uh, to, to pack God in their bag. You know, Sundays are not sacred anymore. There are sports now that's competing with Sundays. There, there are lots of extracurricular activities that are competing with Sundays. And there's lots of objections that you have. Uh, that in order for you to pack God in this bag. But I want to say this. Thank you for doing that. And although I'm not sure what sports Chanel played as a, as a kid and what she did, and I'm not sure all that she did and what softball or track or dancing and all the stuff she did, but I am so grateful that you packed God in her bag because I know that one day when life gets hard, and when one day when the marriage gets tough and the finances run low, like she can't go back to her softball and figure out the plays, but she can go back to the, the God that you packed inside her bag. And I want to say thank you so much for doing that. And to any, any parent here today, I just want to encourage you before we're seated, like let this be a commitment that we got to pack God in the bag of our kids. Whether you have adult kids or young kids, and maybe some of you feel like you missed the ball on that and you dropped the ball, I want to encourage you that it's still not too late to pray over your kids, to believe God for your kids, to send your kids scripture, to, to make sure your kids are in church. And I know that church is a, a really a, a, not a thing that we see much often today, and it's not really sacred anymore, but man, make sure you raise your kids in church. And, and, and I know that sometimes little Jimmy don't want to get up in the morning on Sunday morning. But please make sure you realize that little Jimmy is going to need that church when little Jimmy is older, when little Jimmy is 35, 45 years old, and life gets hard. So thank you so much for this moment. I want to pray uh, for this day and pray uh, that we may continue and we may learn the covenant of marriage in this day. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you may speak right to your people. God, I ask, God, that you may show us the covenant of marriage and what that means for our lives, God. Lord, speak to us, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You all can be seated today. Um, so I asked the question, who brings this woman to become one with this man? Awesome. Doesn't Chanel look beautiful up here today? 
Chanel, I'm going to put this right here, right, this luggage right next to you, because I really want this to illustrate to us today that although you are a woman of a guard, every marriage comes with baggage, and it comes with luggage. <laughs> and I always say this, that the goal of dating, the goal of dating is not to just to determine if personalities match. It's not just to determine if uh, he or she can make you happy or if he or she looks good, and those things are really important. But I really believe that the goal of dating is for you to determine what's in the bag. And more importantly, are you anointed to carry what's in his or her bag? You know, I think oftentimes when it comes to the concept of dating, we, we love, we like to rush into this, and, and our culture teaches us to look on an outward appearance. And although Chanel looks really really beautiful right now, you know, uh, there, she wakes up in the morning, right? And although Evan looks really handsome right now, his haircut gets a little rough at times. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I think more importantly, our culture teaches us to focus on the outward appearance, but God teaches us to focus on the inward. And he teaches us to look for what's inside the bag, because if you don't know what's in the bag, then you're in trouble. And so I just want to make an, a, a really a plea to all of our singles here today that it's our job to live lives that are filled with integrity, but it's also our jobs when we enter into dating relationships to, to, to go out and to spy the land as the Israelites would do, to go out and see what's in the land, to see what giants that you need to face, to see what issues you need to face, because I believe this, that we have a problem when it comes to marriage because our dating relationship have not been healthy. And we have isolated ourselves and we have done things on our own. And as a result, we have bags and we're surprised to know what's in the bag. So can I make an encouragement to you? Like see that guy around his mom or his dad and his family and around his friend. See that girl how she acts when you don't buy her the latest uh, Louis Vuitton bag. See how she acts. Come on, somebody. <laughs> because if you're not careful, you might miss what's in the bag. But Evan and Chanel are here simply because uh, they have uh, witnessed uh, a love in each other, um, and they have witnessed that they are here as a, as a sign to God that they believe that marriage is designed by God and for God's glory and for his presence. You know, when I think about Evan and Chanel, when they were dating, this is a true story, they made a commitment uh, prior uh, to them starting to date that they would not touch each other, in fact, kiss each other. And so they went their entire dating and engaged relationship without kissing each other because they prepared themselves for this moment. They realized that they did not want to, want to defile the sacredness of marriage, and they wanted to wait for a moment that it would be like this. And I want to say well done to you all. Well done for doing this the right way. I asked Evan, I said, Evan, so, man, you weren't tempted to kiss her? He said, man, I was tempted. But he said to himself, I know myself. I think one of the greatest things when it comes to marriage, and if we're going to have healthy relationships, we first need to know ourselves. We need to know who we are and our struggles and our weakness and what is in us, and because every man has a dog in them, right? And Evan knew that if there are certain environments and certain circumstances, music, movies, uh, physical contact, that will awake the dog in him. And so what he did was he, he starved the dog that was in him. Um, can I encourage you men today, if you're going to be a godly men, uh, men of integrity, uh, men of honor, we need to learn how to starve the dog that is within us. Because the more we feed the dog, the dog will become uncontrollable. And then when we get into the covenant of marriage, we're now in trouble because the dog is off the leash. So can I tell you men, can I implore you to keep the dog on the leash this morning? And so they made this commitment early on that they're going to get married and, and make this commitment. And, and, and Evan, I just want to uh, read this to you and make sure that you understand what marriage is all about. Because culture tells you uh, that marriage is about to, the marriage is to, to make you complete. And although you know this, I want to remind you that marriage does not make you complete. In fact, marriage exposes who you already are. And so marriage is not even about addition. It's not about adding someone to you. Marriage is about uh, you coming together and seeing what God's going to do. But more importantly, it is going to expose who you really are. 
And so if you were a dog while you were single, you're going to be a dog while you are married. And if you are loose while you are single, you're going to be loose while you are married. And I love it because marriage, sometimes we think that is made to only make us happy, but we realize that marriage is also primarily is to make us holy. It's to bring out the holiness of, of God in us. And I want to say that marriage is really a, not about a happiness issue. It's about a holiness issue, and it's about an honoring God issue. And so thank you so much for understanding that principle. So, Evan, today you share here exhibiting an incredible trust in Chanel and a love and a God's plans for marriage, and you are entrusting the rest of your life to her. And, and as you do so, I believe this, that the miracle of God is going to come over your life and over your marriage. And I believe this, that a marriage is not only a, a coming together of two people, but it's the starting of a ministry. It's the starting of two people coming together to accomplish a vision. And so the, you know what the Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. Can I, can I tell you today that I met with Evan and Chanel, and they have a vision for their marriage. God, they have a statement that they're living by. They have a thing that they're trying to accomplish because God has called them to accomplish something together. So Evan Chanel has been given to you from God to be your partner in marriage, forsaking all others. So will you stand by her no matter what happens, respecting her individuality, understanding her needs, her needs, accepting her changes, and enjoying her love as long as you both shall live? If so, Evan, respond by saying, I will. And Evan, do you cherish Chanel and promise to love her without reservation, to comfort her in times of distress, to encourage her to achieve all of her goals, to laugh with her, to cry with her, for as long as you both shall live, if so, Evan, respond by saying, I do. I do. And likewise, Chanel, in the same way, Evan has been given to you by God to be your partner in marriage, forsaking all others. Will you... Stand by him no matter what happens, respecting him, understanding his needs, and enjoying his love as long as you both shall live, is so respond by saying, I will. And Chanel, do you respect and trust Evan and promise to do all in your power to keep your love as strong as it is today? If so, by saying, say by, start by saying, I do. You know, when we come to this part of weddings, when I do weddings, it's, it's a part, one of my favorite parts of weddings that I do is that I involve the audience. And what I do is that I say that these two people are here, although they're here alone up here with me, but they also are here with you. And I believe this, that every marriage that is healthy is surrounded by a healthy community. Can I encourage you all today? It is the, it is the church of God's responsibility to make sure that we care for one another's marriage that we protect one another's marriage, that we pray for one another's marriage, that we encourage one another's marriage. And I can tell you the marriages that are strong are in community. And the marriages that are barely hanging on and are falling apart, they are isolated and they're not into small groups. They're not into getting, doing life with each other. And I'm telling you, isolation is the starting point for the marriage to fall apart. So today, you all are here to witness Evan and Chanel's second wedding. <laughs> and I just want to, I want to implore to you, church, and Evan and Chanel attend this church, and I, it's all of our responsibility to pray for them, to encourage them. And they're a young couple, so I remember those uh, young couple days. I remember when Brittany and I were first, in our first year of marriage, our first Christmas, we only had $10 to spend on each other. The struggle was real, real. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I remember we, there was one particular day where we had this awesome uh, idea that we were going to splurge and we were going to go to Hamburger Helper, but this time we we're going to add meat to it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and we had enough money to buy some ground turkey inside the little tube package. We couldn't even afford the regular ground turkey. We had to buy it in the little tubes uh, package. And we were struggling, but I'll never forget, there was one day, there was a, a, a lady named uh, Miss Marilyn and uh, Mr. Larry. They went to our church, and they were an older couple, and we were barely hanging on. I remember they gave me what's called a Pentecostal handshake at church. You know what that is? That's when they have a little money in their hand, they kind of shake your hand. That's called a Pentecostal hallelujah handshake. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that was on a Sunday afternoon. They put $10 in our pocket. 
I never forget, Brittany and I were so pumped, and we went to eat Chinese with that food. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I ordered some General Tao's chicken, and we added two egg rolls and some extra fried rice, and we, you thought that we were eating P.F. Chains. Come on. But it was moments like that where I needed the encouragement of my church body. I want to encourage you that although we come to this church and all of us put on a smile and marriages may seem like it's going okay, we know that life happens. We know that the enemy wants to attack every marriage and every single in this room. And so it is our responsibility as God's people to surround every married couple and to pray for them and to encourage them and to do life with them. So will you, as the church of Jesus Christ, would you all accept the responsibility to care for Evan and Chanel? Would you pray for them? Would you encourage them? Would you give them a Pentecostal handshake every now and then? Come on, somebody. <laughs> They'll say, I received that. <laughs> Cash App Chanel <laughs> Smith. Come on, somebody. <laughs> would, you, would you all be the church of God for them? If so, respond by saying, we will. And so now we have come to the vows. The vows is the wedding. The vows is a moment of covenant. The vows is a time where we, as as people make a commitment to God that we choose to serve this individual for the rest of our lives. So, Evan, as we say the vows, I want you to repeat after me. Say, I, Evan. I, Evan. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. Take you, Chanel. Take you, Chanel. Hold on, I'm going to stop. What I want you to do in this moment is that oftentimes we made the mistake we see the American weddings, and in American weddings, what we do is that we see a male and a female make a vow to each other. But a biblical wedding is not so. The biblical wedding says that the covenant that's made is not to each other, but it's actually to God. So, Evan, what I want you to do is not look at Chanel. I want you to look up, and I want you to say this covenant to God because the deal is, is that Chanel will change. And even Chanel, will, she's going to grow old one day. One day, she's going to not be on her best day, and she's going to uh, yell at you a lot. She's going to tell you to do some things a lot. <laughs> and she will change. And this is why you don't make the covenant to him, her. You're making your covenant to God because your God is ever the same. He is unchanging. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So no matter what changes in her, no matter if she's not the same lovey-dovey person that y'all had when y'all were dating and y'all talked on the phone to 2 a.m. and now she won't talk to you at all. <laughs> no matter if she changes, your covenant is not to her. So even if she changes, the covenant remains the same because your covenant is to your God. So I want you to say it again. Say, in the presence of God. In the presence of God. God, I commit myself to Chanel. God, I commit myself to Chanel. To laugh with and enjoy. To laugh with her and enjoy. You got it? Good job. <laughs> oh. To grieve with and sorrow. <laughs> to grieve with the um, sorrow. To grow with and love. To grow with the love. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Now that, co that covenant was made to God. And God is unchanging. And so a covenant to God is an eternal covenant. It's not based off your circumstances. It's not based off how happy you feel or how much pleasure she gives you. It's not based off how, how she makes you feel and if she respects you or not. The covenant that you just made was to your God who is the same and who is a faithful God and who remains a loving God. And so therefore, when she changed and she will change, when she makes a mistake and she will make a mistake, when she hurts you and breaks your heart and disrespects you and calls the dog pride in you to rile, to come out, when she does that, you remember this moment that the covenant was not towards her. The covenant was towards God. America says 
that the covenant is to her. So when she changes, therefore the covenant can change. But now as a result of this moment, the covenant has been made to God. And Chanel, likewise, just know that this commitment that you're making is a covenant that you're making with God, not Evan. So I'm going to ask you to look up and look to your father and make this covenant to him. Say, I, Chanel. I, Chanel. Take Evan. Take Evan. To be my husband. To be my husband. To laugh with and joy. To laugh with and joy. To grieve with and sorrow. To grieve with and sorrow. To grow with and love. To grow with and love. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Now, Chanel, the covenant that you made with God is that no matter what changes in him and no matter what mistakes he makes and no matter what he does for you, or if he, but if he puts his hands on you, this whole church would knock him out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to put that out there. And, and her daddy like, well, I, and I got a gun loaded up. What's up? <laughs> I'm from 757. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> Um, but the covenant you made with, with Evan is, is, a, is an eternal covenant. So meaning that when he's not on his best day, the love for him remains the same. The calling in marriage as a wife remains the same, even when he's not. Because so now your love is not based on his performance. Your love is based on the covenant that you made to your God. And so now your love is not based on his performance, but based on his performance. Yeah. And as a result, his performance is the same every yeah. single day. Faithful, loving, merciful, mighty, powerful. That's who our God is. Yeah. And so when you love Evan, you're loving Evan from the performance and the love of God and not from him. Because if you make the mistake and love him based off of what he does, then we're in trouble. So there's this, there's this book uh, in, entitled The Five Love Languages, and it talks about how we are to love our spouses in different ways. And it could be acts of service or uh, physical touch or words of affirmation or, you know, all these different things. And so I just want to encourage you that don't love him, right, based off the way that you want to be loved and don't love her based off the way that she, you want to be loved, right? So I remember when I first got married, um, and I was, I'm was i a, a touchy-feely guy, so all, all Brittany got to do to feed me and give me life is to touch me and tell me I'm doing a good job, and that's all she got to do. So she don't got to buy me nothing. She don't got to cook for me. She don't got to uh, just touch me, baby. Just touch me. <laughs> so I remember when I first year of marriage, I would always be on top of her. I, I would touch her a lot, and I would tell her, oh, I love you so beautiful, girl. I love you so much. And she was like, come on, give me some space. And I don't like the word space. For me, I like to be close. I want to be on you all the time, right? That, that was just me, right? I wanted to touch her. When we walked through the mall, I wanted to touch her. And when we was on the couch watching Netflix, well, Netflix didn't exist then, but whatever was watching. <laughs> we were, you know, but here, here's what I want to say is that I learned in that moment that she, her love language is acts of service. And so I realized that she gets more love by me taking out the trash and cleaning the dishes than she does by me massaging her, telling her she's doing a great job. So your job, Evan, is to study her like a book and to figure out how she needs to be loved, not the way you be loved. And Chanel, likewise, your job is to study, to focus, to pay attention, to ask God, how does Evan need to be loved? Now, they just made a covenant before God, and so technically, in the eyes of God, they are married. But they wanted to, and I believe this, I wanted to use it as a sign that the first thing they wanted to do as a married couple was to take Holy Communion. I believe this, that not only is this a principle in a ceremony, I think this is a principle for life and when it comes to relationships. Is God the first thing in the marriage? Is he number one? 
Can I tell you, don't make finances number one. Don't make buying a new house number one. Don't make, uh, you know, achieving lots of goals and getting that dream job number one. Please, please hear me. Make God number one in your marriage. Make him the center of your marriage. Can I encourage you as, as married couples who are in Mary here today? Like, take, take communion together. Like, it's really easy for you to go to Walmart, buy some grape juice, and, and get some crackers. And it's really not about what you do with the, the actual elements. It's about the sacredness of you saying, God, we remember the sacrifice that you made for us. You know, the cool thing about, uh, you know, communion is communion is, 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 is a representation of what God did for us. And how really, if you really look at our lives, our lives are not like this beautiful bouquet that's right here. But really, communion, it represents how our lives are like a, a rose that was scattered on the floor. It, it represents our lives that was broken apart. And how whenever the Christ came and he died on the cross for our sins, we're reminded today that literally that he comes to put us back together again. That's the type of God that we do, and that's what you do in Holy Communion. So as we take Holy Communion, we're going to have a spoken word. So I'm going to invite Evan Chanel to come with me, and we're going to have communion. Imagine standing at the end of the aisle nervous, hands tingling, mouth dry, heart beating, and you sure you don't deserve this. Imagine you take your steps on this journey of forever. And there's people screaming on the left, please don't do this. And people on your right screaming, this will be the best decision of your life. Imagine not knowing which one is true. Imagine you look up at your groom and his soul whispers, I've been waiting for you. Imagine thinking of all your spots and wrinkles and he tells you to come anyway. Imagine you wanting to hide, but he wants you to stay. Imagine having so many words, but nothing to say because words wouldn't do justice on his character. Imagine he knew every dark secret about you, but you knew he could be your light. Imagine this other person wanted nothing more but to be a groom to his bride. Imagine he loved you enough to die for you, just in case you decided to live better. Imagine that he would inspire a whole book and use each chapter to input a love letter. Imagine he could touch you and heal you. Imagine that there is a language y'all would share and only he would hear you. Imagine you are his for a lifetime and even past that. Imagine that this person with all power is loving you. Imagine you can receive this with just two words. I do. Now what if I told you that this was not a poem about you and your spouse, but imagine if this was a poem about Christ and you. Speaks. Thank you. Amen. Awesome. Evan and Chanel have used rings as a symbol of their love for each other. And a, a circle has no ending at all. Can, can, I, can we just make a commitment as married couples here today? Like, can we make a commitment that, hey, this thing is going to go forever. This thing's going to last. It's going to go through the hard times, the easy times. It's going to go through the, the, the mountaintops, the valley lows. We're, we're going to stick in this thing. We're going to fight with each other. We're going to fight for each other. And when we're fighting against each other, we're going to invite God to be with us. Right? And so, Evan, I want to give you this ring right here. Would you grab your, your bride's hand and say, in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As my unconditional vow to you. As my unconditional vow to you. Amen. And likewise, Chanel, would you grab the, your groom's finger and say, in the name of the Father, in the, name of the, Father the, Son, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit I, give you this ring I give you this ring as a symbol of my unconditional vow, as a symbol of my unconditional vow to, you. to you. Amen. So, 
we see Evan and Chanel are here and they are representing here and I want to present to you a beautiful couple and uh, you know when we started this thing and I think about Chanel and being the bride the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 that we are the church of God we are the bride of Christ and the Bible says that all of us have sinned we have fallen short of the glory of God so every time we sin we make a mistake it's almost like it's stuff on us every time we we fall down and we live a life that we're not supposed to live it's almost like it's ruining the bride and the Bible says that the the Lord is coming back for a bride with spotless without any blemish all white and we see ourselves and we see our lives and how we all have these the stuff on us the sin and some of you have walked through divorce and some of you have walked through addiction and hardship and we still we still all we all of us we have this stuff on us and the more I, I thought about this is the more I thought about how this is us Chanel is me Chanel is you and Evan represents Christ and, and what I learned is that in the book of Revelation it talks about a wedding that will happen one day and in that wedding something special is going to happen what's going to happen is, is that the, the God's going to come down and he's going to look for that spotless bride and then what Evan's going to do is that he's going to take off his jacket and, and what Christ is going to do is he's going to do what he always does is that he's going to cover us so that when God looks down God doesn't see spots God sees Christ God sees him. Come on, somebody. Can we thank God that we have a God that covers us? That no matter what you walk through, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter how low you've gotten, that your God is a covering God. Your God covers every sin today. Real quick. Now, it's awesome because what Evan earlier you said, Evan, by your by your statements representing Christ, that your love for me is not based upon me. Your love for me is based on your father. So no matter how many mistakes I make, you're still gonna love me because the covenant that Jesus made with us, it wasn't with us, it was with God. And God is unchanging, right? So Evan, I want you to say it, so what happens when I make a mistake. My covenant is with God, not Chanel. So what happens when I get a divorce? My covenant is with God, not Chanel. What happens if I sin and I make a mistake? My covenant is with God, not Chanel. What happens if I fall in an addiction and I go low, really low? My covenant is with God, not Chanel. What happens when I fall down and I make all type of issues in my life? What happens? My covenant is with God, not Chanel. Come on, somebody. The covenant is with God, y'all. Come on. So, you thought that you came here to watch a natural wedding, but I come here to prepare you for a spiritual wedding. Here's the deal. The more you are prepared for your spiritual wedding, the more you will thrive in your natural wedding. Come on. We have a wedding problem because we have a wedding problem. Come on, somebody. The more you prepare yourself for that day when the bridegroom comes and he comes down and looking and all they're going to see is Christ on you. Christ on you. I want to encourage you today that the more you prepare for that wedding, the more you're ready. You're ready for this wedding and I believe this that if we're going to have an unusual marriage unusual singleness unusual relationships we have to get ready for the future wedding that one day will happen the Bible says that when that wedding happens 
there's going to be a, a massive party. So I come and let you know that here at Motivation Church, I know today's a special day and we are decorated, we are dressed up, we decorated, there's cake outside and we're calling it Wedding Sunday. But I come to declare that we're going to be a church on mission, that every Sunday is Wedding Sunday, that every Sunday someone comes to meet the bridegroom, that every Sunday somebody comes to meet their Savior, the God who's going to cover them, the God who's going to be with them, the God who's going to be faithful to them, the God who's going to walk with them every step of the way, every Sunday is Wedding Sunday! No matter who you are here today, no matter who you are, no matter what's your story, I want to let you know that today the number one thing God wants to do to you, whether you're male or female, he wants to cover you today. So when the, the Savior comes down, when the Father comes down, he don't see Chanel's issues. He see the coat of Christ all over your life today. If you're here today, you need to make that choice to, to allow God to cover you today, to allow him to come into your life and to, 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 to show you who he is and how he wants to cover your sin. If you want to do it, make that choice today. Today could be your day. And if your marriage is on the rocks today, I want to encourage you. I guarantee you, the more you prepare for the future way, the more God will restore your current way. Can I tell you today, as God's people, that God and Jesus, he's the bridegroom. And the bride is us, is the church. And your God's covenant was never towards you. So every promise that he promised you, it really wasn't a promise to you. It was a promise to his father. So he will come through on his promise, y'all. Come on. Can we give God one more hand clap of praise for that today? Come on. So real quick, okay, B back into a regular wedding mode. Here we go. Can we stretch our hands out and really pray for this couple and being up here? And I know, thank you for being in a volunteer and making this happen. And I'm believing that this is going to be just a moment where God just even anoints you and Sh Evan and Chanel just for a, a new season of ministry, a new season of a usefulness, effectiveness, open doors for you that you never saw coming. God, we just pray a blessing over them. We pray a blessing over this marriage. We pray, God, when the enemy comes and try to distract them and try to, uh, to bring distance and space in between them, Lord, we pray, God, that they may look into the suitcase that has been packed with God and they may dig up the prayers that their, their parents and their grandparents have prayed over them, God. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they may walk in fruitfulness, God, that, that they may walk in the, the presence of God and that, Lord, that you may cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. So, God, I'm asking that you may have your way in their lives, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.